is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. You have all the markets in red territory, but clawing back some of the losses. You got the S&P negative by 11 points, but you were down negative by about 24 points at the low this morning. We have the ECB as they hike 25 basis points. Uh, Lagarde speaking right now indicating that they're going to go more than even this meeting. They're probably going the next meeting as well. The first question, I was listening before I came on the air, first question had to do with our decision, right, and talking about are you on a similar trajectory where you can take a look at the lag, the catch-up, and pretty much it was no. We're probably going to hike at the next meeting as well. We have a lot of work to do. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of volatility around that. We have jobless claims. We have retail sales to get into this morning. And we have a market sitting above 4,400, but slightly in the red. That's a one-minute chart, just to see the illustration. We back it up on a 10-minute chart. You see the volatility of yesterday on Fed Day. Quite an acceleration, man. We almost made it all the way down to the lows. You're talking about lows of about 43.84, okay? And we made it to a low of about 43.93. This morning on that low, we're back at 44.06. You get the NASDAQ 100. Not quite down at that level like the S&P. NASDAQ 100. Negative 65 points, but how about it? 15,134. Remarkable. Got the Dow just off 30 points, 34,253. The Russell, negative by 10. Russell actually made it below the lows of yesterday, and the Russell was getting hammered yesterday, man, compared to some of the other indices trading higher. Crude, just under $70, 69.23. You jump over to gold, you talk about some volatility, man. Gold contract, 1947 down to 1936. Now, here's the cool thing, folks. Gold. Our man Tim Ord, he's got his webinar going on tonight talking about trading gold. Uh, it's not a live trading webinar, so the volatility, but pretty cool. We have some action in gold. He's going to be going over for that for two hours. You can check that out on the front page of TFNN. We'll reference that later in the program. You're down to 1936. You're back to 1949. Now, what you have happening here is that you've got a couple different stories going on. First, you had the reaction to... The weekly jobless claims coming in at 260 some thousand jobs, uh, jobless claims initial for Thursday. Then you have retail sales, which was a strong number and a beat as opposed to a negative number. But then you have the ECB coming. And guess what? They are going to be extra hawkish potentially. You jump over the dollar index, right? And there's the 810, 820. Yeah, not as much volatility really as that number really accelerated, accelerated from 8 until about 840. Um, yeah, so not too much volatility even in the last 20 minutes since the ECB came on. But it's going to be an interesting one, man, as we jump around. We jump over the VIX, have to somewhat chuckle. We were just sitting at a 13 handle. We're just above that level at 14.06 right now. you got to take a look at yields, some volatility there as well. And what do we got accelerating, man? How about getting back all of yesterday, right? How about that in terms of the first indication, the Fed coming out, saying we might have two more hikes. Chairman's wording, and I would agree, man, he was trying to pause without sounding like he was pausing, man. And when they asked him, and Bloomberg said it so, but boy, if they were really true to their words that they're probably coming back with two hikes, we only get one more month of data, as in we only get June data, really, before the next meeting. So you're going to get one more month of data when you're going to talk about, you know, we're going to get non-farm payrolls early in July, right? We're going to get retail sales, et cetera. We just got, you're going to get all the June data for the meeting that's coming in late July, but that's all you're going to get. You're not going to get two months, three months. So if you're really on that hiking cycle and you really thought, okay, we're going to give it a pause, we're going to come back and we're going to hike. But boy, all he said was July was live. Well, if you don't know July's live, when we got inflation between 4 to 5%, okay, every meeting is basically live right now because the data could change anything if inflation rears back up. 
So that was about the bare minimum you could say to go along with the pause. And the market took that and ran with it. But boom, just like that, man, we're talking about yields below where we were trading back then. You got the 10-year at 3.75% right now. The yield on the 10-year, we jump over to the 30-year. Yeah, almost back to where we were yesterday as well. Up by 20 ticks, 127.20. And let's jump back to the dollar index as we jump around. You get the dollar index, 102.81. All right, where do we kick things off? Let's kick it off with the ECB. They hike again and signal rates will rise more before the peak. So their rate is 3.5. Now remember, the Fed just stopped at 5.1 essentially, right? So they raised to 3.5 from three and a quarter. As I said, Lagarde was over there saying that they're probably going to the next meeting as well. She's talking right now. So expect that you may get some volatility, especially when you talk about currencies over there. Inflation. I mean, they're at some lofty levels, man. You know, how could you pause anywhere near 3.5% when they're still dealing with inflation above 5% in dramatic fashion? So she's speaking right now. We'll see where they go from there. In one second. Okay, I have the numbers up. I'll get to them. Weekly jobless claims, 260,000. I have retail sales up, too, unfortunately. I'll find that article. We'll jump to it after the break. But nonetheless, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we get the markets down by 12, still sitting above 4,400 in the S&P. It's a remarkable number. Amazon shares, down about a dollar, 125.50. You jump over to NVIDIA. How about NVIDIA yesterday, right? NVIDIA, up to 433. You technically closed at 429 markets just kept going last night after the bell right up to 433 you're back to 424 you jump over to amd not quite the same scenario they're off about a couple dollars in the pre-market as well microsoft shares barely in the red we jump over to google google's its own deal man google's gonna potentially have some issues you know you got the eu coming after google that's no joke. We jump over to Lennar. Lennar with their numbers after the bell last night. Strong numbers for Lennar. Home builders continuing higher, up from about 115 to 119 in the pre market. We jump over to DR Horton, and they're going to be about a dollar higher as well, extending some of those gains. I and mean, can you imagine what's going to happen now? The interesting part about this is think about this part for the home builders as we digress a bit. But they covered this on fast market yesterday in terms of the equities. They didn't cover my point that I'm talking about, but they covered this. The housing market's held up so well, okay? And Lennar was the one that actually had the numbers. What's going to happen as the Fed comes into a pause, even if you go out a year to 18 months, right? What happens when they really come into potentially some cutting and you see mortgage rates go back down to four and a half to 5% or something like that. What's gonna to happen to housing prices? Well, for the first time, what's interesting there is that you're gonna have the ability for people potentially who are in a mortgage at 4% to consider selling their house. So maybe that releases a bunch of supply, okay? Because you wanna make both cases. You say, man, housing prices are holding up well at 7%. How are they gonna do at 5%? There's gonna be some headwinds there with people selling their house and potentially hurting the home builders. Interesting angle on things, right? Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. Talking to our man, Kevin Hanks. Don't go away. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. You take a look at the S&P. We're negative by 10 points right now, trading at 44.09, but off of the lows that we had for the previous session. You have the ECB meeting uh, speaking right now. We'll see how they go. You get some action in yields, right? You jump over to the 10-year this morning. You talk about a spike, man. We're up 15, base, uh, 15 ticks right now at 113.11. On the 10-year, you jump over to the dollar index. We get some action in the dollar index as well. As what do you got? You got lower yield right now. You have a weaker dollar, and you actually have a weaker market as well. So the coolest part about this is we get to find out, folks, what the Fed chair was really talking about in terms of the, the real conversation has to be around what they're really thinking of this pause, right? Is it a pause or is it a skip? What's their mentality going forward? How real are they when they're talking about two more potential hikes on the table? We get to find out as, uh, as time progresses. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks, folks. Every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV. Your host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White. They got a great lineup of guests, folks. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups. They're usually talking three different equities, all of them with defined risk. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Welcome to Data Dump Thursday. We got something for just about everybody. In today's market, you've got an ECB rate decision. You've got a bunch of one, two, three, four, five, six data points already out this morning and, and a couple more coming up. Uh, this is going to be a busy day, busy end of the week here. Uh, but obviously coming off the pre the Jerome Powell press conference, um, a lot to go through, a lot for the market to consume and digest, Tommy. Kevin, I was going to ask you, what, what do you think? We all know, of course, that they paused. That was pretty much expected. They had the um, idea in there that maybe they go to 5.6. You're talking about two more hikes. You had the press conference. Uh, do you really think that's where they are? I, I love that conversation right now in terms of is July as live as they say? Where do you think they go from here? I know we got data coming down the line, but it's interesting whether, and I don't want to use whether you believe them or not, right? But how strong are they in the in the conviction, maybe, that they're going to go two more hikes? If that's the case, why are they pausing? What do you think about that whole whole conversation, Kevin? I think there's two stories. I think it's what Jerome Powell did that's important. And I think it's what Jerome Powell said that's important. By, by paying attention to what he did, he told you that they've raised interest rates a long way and they think 
the inflation ball is starting to roll downhill, and they may not need to help it. I think, by definition, Joel Powell wants to stop raising interest rates, but, but his rhetoric is so important, and Fed speakers are so important, that you also have to listen to what he said, which means if the data doesn't come in, he's prepared to do more. So I think what he did is important, and I think what he said is important, Tommy. So, you know, he also said, you know, a lot of the reaction yesterday was to the dot plot, right, the SEP, with nine members thinking we we need two more hikes, two supported three hikes, one supported a full point higher. So uh, 16 of the 18 members thought we needed rates higher than they are right now. But, and here's the big, big interesting part, Tommy, that's a snapshot of right now how they feel. That could change. And Jerome Powell even said the dot plot that you see, that's not a committee decision. It's not a committee plan. That's what they think right now as they look at the economy. So I wouldn't – I would. It, it's important for traders, investors, your viewers, to understand that what the Fed says is a snapshot of today or, yet in this case, yesterday. And that could change – subject to the data. So I think Jerome Powell is trying, Tommy, and it's starting to come into play. I think he's threading the needle here. He's got inflation coming down. Like he said, that uh, part of inflation, that housing X services, where wages are in that component, which makes up about 56% of core PCE, that's the sticky part. That's what's causing him the most problems, and that'll come down the slowest. So, but He's got inflation coming down, and he's got unemployment at 3.7%. I think he's threading the needle, Tommy. It's a great take, man, and it's pretty cool to see him you know, answering the questions. And it would make sense, I guess, with where the inflation numbers are right now, that if you're going to not hike, you have to at least appear somewhat hawkish because the numbers are so high. Of course, they might be willing to hike. And as you say, I'm sure they're pretty hopeful, man. Uh, we get to find out as the data comes over the next couple of months. Interesting. They really only get... Um, one full month of data as in the next meeting is in July. We've already gotten a lot of the numbers from May, so we're going to get a lot of the numbers in June. Uh, and, and it's summer trading as well. I can't wait to hear what some of the, the different Fed speakers are going to be saying in terms of their preferences because it was unanimous, but as we know, unanimous with the potential of some more hikes down, down the line. With that in mind, Kevin, you mentioned, man, we got some data this morning. What do you think of retail sales? As, as you know, you got retail sales. We got jobless claims. You mentioned the ECB as well. Lagarde speaking as I came on the air. What do you think of those retail sales? Strong numbers, man. Um, is, is good news good news, Kevin? Or are we going to be in the deal where you see a strong retail sales number and the focus is now on the next Fed meeting? What do you think of that number and how that plays into the whole scenario? Yeah, what jumped out at me there, Tommy, was the X vehicles and gas month over month coming in at up 0.4. They were looking for weaker in the headline, but that number can be volatile, right, in, the, in retail sales because of vehicles. Uh, so X vehicles on gas up 0.4. That was a fairly uh, stronger number than, uh, than everyone expected. Besides that, a lot of the numbers came in pretty much in line. Some regional data out of Philly Fed and Empire State and uh, import-export prices. What jumped out at me is exports down 1.9%, down 10.1 year over year. That was kind of a, a big number there. So besides that, everything's coming in line. Like I said, this may have to do with a bunch of news coming out, and uh, NASDAQ and S&P, at least to start the day, were overbought. So let's see how this plays out during the day. And what do you think about some of the yield action? I got the 10-year right now up on the Thinkorswim platform, Kevin. And, boy, we got some action this morning. You got the ECB hiking rates, and it seems like they're going to be hiking at the next meeting at least as they're at only 3.5% right now compared to we're over 5 right now even as we pause. Uh, what do you think of the fact we got the 10-year now above in price in terms of a little bit lower yield even than when we came out yesterday? We saw a spike down to 112.12, and we're almost a full point higher right now, Kevin, in the 10-year. Yeah, well, I think, uh, remember, the, the government has to raise a bunch of cash over the next uh, days and weeks. So I would expect some downward pressure on bonds and notes and some upward pressure on yields just for that. However, you know, you have to always be cognizant of some event that may cause bonds to rally and yields to go down. So, yeah, the, I think the bond market, the 10-year yield is the one you want to be watching, Tommy.
Nice. With that in mind, Kevin, we got a data dump, like you said. I'm sure you'll have plenty to talk about at Fast Market on 12, but are you talking about some some specific equities as well coming up today? Yeah, we're late in earnings season, Tommy, so the names are getting a little thin, but we do have Adobe coming out with earnings after the bell, nice. so we'll focus on that name, a couple others that we're lo looking at to add in as news comes out. I mean, Target raised their dividend today, Delta Airlines raised their dividend today, so interesting news in the airlines, but the focus of today's show will be on Adobe's earnings after the bell. Boy, and as as you're speaking, I pull it up on the Thinkorswim platform. It's amazing how many of these stocks have accelerated from 340 May 16th. About a month ago, we're trading at 480 right now. Remarkable. Kevin, I appreciate the time on a busy morning as always, man. Have a great day. Have a great program at 12. And we'll talk to you next week. Have a great long weekend as well, man. Have a great weekend, Tommy. You too. Folks, check it out. Every trading day, 12 o'clock. I'm always watching Fast Market. Check it out today with our man, Kevin Hinks. They'll be talking to Adobe as well as some other equities. And we'll be right back for the open, folks. Stay tuned. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P down about 10 points right now. We jumped back to a short-term time frame chart. There's your 10-minute chart. You dive down to a low of about 43.95 in the pre-market. We're trading right now at 44.08. Now, as I was mentioning, it's so interesting. There's something for almost everybody in terms of what Chairman Powell had been saying. 
because you have the journal over here, okay? Nick Timaroa, who covers the Fed pretty extensively. He was in the room yesterday asking a question. And his stance is that a July rate is, hike is coming. And the case that he makes is some of the verbiage that he used here, okay? And, and literally talking about potentially saying the word skip. Okay, now wait, let me make sure that's the that's the right article I was talking about. Yeah, here we go. He includes the quote here talking about it. If you heard it, if you listen to the press conference, and it was pretty cool yesterday, we played it on live on Tiger TV in terms of the chairman's press conference for a majority of it up until just after 3 o'clock or so. His tongue slip mention of a skip, and he did do that. He also used the word pause later. You always have to wonder whether he had to, and this was the quote up here. Here we go. He did, yeah. Several analysts said they believed that, that believed that, in terms of his reference to the skip, inadvertently revealed his preference to raise rates next month. We're trying to get this right. This is his quote. And if you think of the speed and level of the rate increases as separate variables, then I think the skip, I shouldn't call it a skip, the decision makes sense. But he did call it a skip. Then you have to go one one go one go step deeper than that, okay? How many levels deep are you, right? How many levels deep are you in terms of who's leveling who here, okay? Because what if it's a fake slip? How cool would that be, right? In terms of, Rand, you, you really want to get people on, the, part, on the, the page that you're as hawkish as possible. You make a pretend slip up. If you don't think it's possible, folks, okay? The whole economy is riding on it. If you don't think that it's possible that somebody would make that case when his whole legacy is riding on that, of course he could do that. So he could have been a lot stronger, I feel like, if they really thought, hey, because I just heard Lagarde. Okay, and Lagarde basically said we're probably hiking in, in the next meeting. He could have said that and he didn't. So they left themselves room there. And that's what the market's going to try and digest today. And I can't wait to see where it goes. As you come down to 43.95 overnight, we're sitting at 44.10. You got the Dow in positive territory. NASDAQ 100, man, 15,120. Pretty remarkable, the acceleration that we've had across the board. Now, we get the numbers this morning, and this is going to be the interesting case. I can't wait to hear what the Fed governors are going to say, because they're probably going to tell us pretty quickly a lot more information in terms of where they're leaning, where voting members are leaning. But you talk about... We get strong numbers. If we keep getting strong numbers like this, right, is that going to be enough to have another pause? Are we going to give it – because every meeting is about six weeks. If you go two pauses, that means you're going four and a half months almost in between hikes. Is that right? Yeah, that would be right. If you pause twice, the time between one hike and the other would almost be a five-month pause. So you skip two meetings, man. Five months. If you're skipping two meetings and giving it five months of catch up and you're still worried about inflation, why are you skipping twice? That might be the end of it. And and I'm sure that they're going to hope it. But I don't understand how numbers are going to rise 0.3% in May from the month before after re months after retail sales rose 0.4% in April. So you got a 0.4% rise in April, 0.3% rise in May. Consumer Consumers spent more at many of the types of retailers tracked by the report, talking about groceries, furniture, electronics. They spent less at gas stations. I mean, it's simple. The, the, the price of gas has been going down. Overall retail spending, including restaurants, rose 1.6 in May from a year earlier, a slower gain than price increases, but when excluding gas stations, spending gains match closely with inflation. So that number hits. We get the ECB this morning. We get to see where it plays out. You jump over to the two-year. We've basically gotten it all back, which is remarkable when you look at the acceleration that we got. That's the two-year. Okay, you go from a price point of 102.10 down to 101.31. Now, this one is not as volatile because it's a shorter term, right? The longer duration you are, the more volatility you're going to have, okay, because any – change in interest rate is going to impact the price more dramatically so when it's a longer duration. The two-year, okay, these are huge moves for the two-year, man. You back it up to Tuesday, 
You go to Wednesday, that was CPI, you go to Wednesday, we've gotten all of Wednesday's move back, which is remarkable when you think about the fact that the market either doesn't believe them, uh, but I think it's a lot of what I said. That was not as strong of a press conference as could have followed if the conviction was really there to go twice more. I think he could have been a little bit stronger and I would not base everything on that one word skip because he said the word pause later. Now, did he say the word skip inadvertently and then he said the word pause later to cover himself? Did he say the word skip inadvertently at first purposely and pretend to do it inadvertently? I mean, folks, it's one of the highest stakes games of poker going on in history, okay? I mean, that's literally what it is. It's a standoff between the Fed and markets and the economy, okay? And if the markets believe the Fed is hell-bent on raising rates and they're going to bring it twice more, things will tighten and that will help calm inflation. So, of course, you want the other party to believe that when you say you're going to raise that you're not bluffing. That's always what you want. No, it's not always. It's usually what you want in poker, right? So talk about a high-stakes game. People do this stuff all the time in poker, folks, okay? They pretend to do something. They make it seem inadvertent, and meanwhile, they're purposely doing it, right? As in some people will, by mistake, raise and act like they just meant to call. Well, meanwhile, they knew they raised or they committed themselves and they pretend like they didn't mean to, right? These things happen all the time. So be careful reading into that. Kevin was talking about their actions and their words. The actions speak louder than words, in my opinion, and they paused. And if inflation was that big of a deal, they could have been a little bit stronger. The chairman could have been a little bit stronger with his words in terms of the next July meeting because we're not going to get a lot of meeting, uh, of data now, what he said is we're going to take, you know, because one of the questions was, just like I've been talking about, we're not going to get that much data, man. We're going to get June data. That's it. Okay? By the next meeting. Then you fast forward to the meeting after that, we're going to get basically two months of data because they fall every six weeks. So sometimes you get a couple months in there. Powell's reference was, well, we're going to look at, you know, the last two or three months or, or you know, we're going to go back more than that because there's volatility, there's variance. I'm sum I'm surmising his words. And we're going to take, you know, recent data of three months, something like that, to make our decision because that's what we do. Well, if they're pausing right now, we're only getting it one more month of data. And they're going to look at the last three months of data to illustrate what they do in July. They're not going to get that much data. And two thirds of the data they're going to be looking at already tells them that they can pause. So I really think that they're going to be hoping that they can do it, man. They're going to be looking for an opportunity to maybe sit at 5.1 and see what happens. We'll see what the market thinks that as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. 
Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets. Can't hold this S&P down, man. S&P's positive territory. You're positive by one point, just like that, trading at 44.20 right now. We'll see if we can hold on to those gains. As our man Basil Chapman would say, the day is young. Basil did his program, folks, live from 8 till 9 in the morning. We're going to be playing that right after this program. So pretty current in terms of where we are. And tonight, our man Tim Ord. We got some action in dollar. We got some action in gold. Great day for a webinar from 4 till 6. Our man, Tim Ward, he's going to be talking about gold, okay? He's had two webinars here. Last week, he did the S&P. They're entirely different webinars, folks, with entire different trading methodologies, okay? Nothing discussed last week is going to have anything to do with what's going to be discussed this week. They're completely separate webinars. That's why Tim wanted to break them down as so. Two different webinars, the methodology and indicators he uses to trade each market. Tonight is gold. You can check it out on the front page of TFNN. He'll be talking about cycles, ratios, advanced decline, and up-down volume indicators, finding extremes, ideal decision areas. That, you know, the way that you look for those extremes, uh, and they're different again, right? He has extremes in the S&P, but they're different extremes when you're looking to trade gold, which is the coolest part of the webinars that he's put together. He has a question and answer period. After the presentation, that's from 4 till 6 tonight. You can check it out on the front page of TFNN. You can sign up for that gold webinar for $295. It's archived, folks, on your members page after it's completed. You can watch it for as many times as you'd like. And if you do want to um, attend that S&P one, you can always sign up for both, and you'll get the archive of the S&P webinar, save $100. But good day for a gold webinar tonight, 4 o'clock. Uh, yeah, right after the program. And Jacob will be covering for Tom again this afternoon. It's Thursday. Don't forget, we got a long weekend this weekend, man. Juneteenth holiday on Monday. Markets closed on Monday. We will be closed on Monday as well. And Tom will be back on Tuesday from vacation. All right. Jumping around to some of the other stories in the morning. Kevin Hinks referenced it. Delta reinstates the quarterly dividend after a three-year halt. We jump over to Delta shares. As you may expect, a little bit of a pop on the open. They got weighed down by the market, so no real huge reaction there. Verizon uh, increasing their dividend. Interesting, right? No action at all. We get the markets in positive territory, man. Dow up 78 points. NASDAQ barely in the red. Let's see how the biggest companies in the world are trading this morning. Apple shares. Look at this. Apple chasing an all-time high, man. I think that was an all-time high close yesterday, was it? Maybe Monday. I think it might have been an all-time high close yesterday. You're going for an all-time high print in Apple right now. 184.74, 
20 pennies away. We jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft up more than a percent, man. I mean, you have to chuckle, right? Uh, I got an article up here about Microsoft. Wasn't sure I was going to jump around, but why not? Talking about what do they do? The sudden AI dominance is scrambling Silicon Valley's power structure. Uh, this is a longer read. I'll post this one in the Tiger's Den because it's an interesting one. Talking about, so what this talks about, right? You got GitHub, GitHub Copilot tool, okay? OpenAI's innovation. Folks, if you haven't even used it, I'm not a coder, okay? We, we do, of course, some code work when you're talking about TFNN's website, even within Shopify, but even just playing with it. I was telling ChatGPT last week or so, uh, write me code to do this, et cetera, et cetera, and watching it go. I mean, for people who actually know how to do that stuff, amazing to think what it's going to do and and that's what they're talking about co-pilots okay which suggests new lines of code to computer programmers 10,000 companies as customers paid offering and has attracted 10,000 company it makes sense man if you're in that business instantly chat gpt should be used every single day for what you're doing if you're a code writer i imagine that's going to be coming quick Yeah, and they're going to announce plans to incorporate other co-pilots into Windows where they'll rewrite, summarize, and explain content. It's going to be in Microsoft Office 365 where they'll create slide decks in PowerPoint, sift through emails in Outlook, and make charts based on Excel data. There's no point in hyping technology for technology's sake, Nadella says. All of these technology shifts are only useful if they do something in the real world, but it's going to be happening, man. Uh, GitHub's version starts at $10 per user. And co-pilots for Microsoft Office apps could be similar, translating into as much as $48 billion in extra revenue within the next four years. That's an analyst at Evercore ISI, right? $48 billion in extra revenue in the next four years, let alone what do you do in the next five, six? He estimated Microsoft's revenue from OpenAI-powered features could hit, we'll call it $100 billion by 2027. That would be like adding three Netflixes to the top line of the world's second most valuable public company. So I'll post this in the Tiger Stand. If you're not in the Tiger Stand, folks, get in the Tiger Stand. Uh, and yeah, pretty interesting where they're going to go from there. All right, let's check back to some of the currencies. As you have the ECB hiking, probably hiking again. We got the dollar trading lower. We got yields lower as well, as you got the 10 years spike into 113.12 this morning. We got the S&Ps plowing higher, man. You can't stop it, right? We're amazing. S&Ps up by nine points. So much for that morning acceleration down to 43.93. And where are we? We're right near the highs of yesterday afternoon right now. As you pushed a high of 44.29, early in the day yesterday, you got up to about 44.40. Yeah, quite the acceleration indeed. NASDAQ only up by five. You get the Dow up by 122 points right now we jump over to crude 69.52 and let's take a look at gold yeah I mean, anytime you're getting this type of moving currencies be interesting to see uh how tim ties that in in terms of dollar tonight with his webinar on gold talking about the dollar talking about gold because you see the relation man right from 1936 to 1961 that gold contract at the same time You've had the dollar index go from a price point of 103.22 down to 102.61. Mammoth moves in currencies, man. Uh, and we'll see if the day holds, because as I said, the day is young, right? 44.25 in the S&P is remarkable. Let's jump around to some of the other companies of note. Tesla, off about 1.5% so far this morning. We jump over to MetaShares, up about 6 tenths percent. Yeah, AI is just not backing down, man. NVIDIA gives back some of their acceleration, accelerating to 433 yesterday. We're trading at 425 this morning so far for NVIDIA. We checked the Microsoft. Look at that bid on Microsoft, man. They just added $5 from where it was in the pre-market. Apple just added $2. That's $32 billion in market cap Apple just added. It just doesn't end, man. Google's a little different story, right? Keep your eye on these, man, because you see how Apple's trading. You see how Microsoft is trading, okay? Google's not in that deal right now. They're down by four tenths percent for Google shares. Jumped in, yeah, Meta's catching a bid. So it's a different class. Google's in a class of its own right now. Be careful on Google shares, man. I'm not sure we've seen a company lose a 25 year, 23 year monopoly in front of our eyes. And that's what we might see happen, right? Where do you think all that money that Microsoft's gonna get is gonna come from? 
It's going to come from somebody. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. Markets in positive territory. S&P's by 11, up by 11. We'll be back for one more segment, folks. Don't go away. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets pushing session highs right now with the S&P. It's not stopping, folks. Up 15 points, 44.33. You get the NASDAQ 100. Uh, the laggard, you could say right now, only up about a tenth of percent. NASDAQ 100 up 20 points. The Dow up by half a percent, 34,457. You get the Russell flat this morning. Russell would be the laggard after getting pummeled yesterday. You jump to crude. Up about a dollar at 69.46, that gold contract with some volatility. Don't forget about Tim Ward's webinar tonight, 4 o'clock, folks, right after my dad's program, 4 till 6. Please don't wait until the last minute if you're going to check it out. It will be right in our Discord server room. So if you're already in the Tiger's Den, pretty easy to get in there. Uh, and we get some volatility on gold today. We got some volatility in these markets, man, with the, I mean, we just got above. The highs that we hit at 3 o'clock yesterday, you came into the Fed decision early in the day. We got to a high of about 44.39 in the S&Ps. And, yeah, we'll see where we go as we got a whole day of trading. And we got tomorrow ahead of the long weekend. Strong retail sales, weekly jobless claims, 260-some thousand. Nothing to get too excited about in terms of even on the retail sales front. But strong economy. And we'll see where we go from there. ECB hikes rates to 3.5%. And basically signals they're coming again at the next meeting. 
it would make sense. They're only at 3.5%. They're still dealing with some pretty extreme inflation over there as well. And they're only at 3.5, right? We're at 5.1. The Fed says we might have to go to 5.6, essentially. And they're sitting at 3.5. Shouldn't be too surprising that they're probably going again on the AC ECB. We jump over to the dollar index. And that's not stopping as well. 102.57. I mean, folks, 8 o'clock this morning, we were at 103.30. Keep your eye on the dollar index because it's driving a lot of the action right now. And, of course, that's all related to yields. You jump over to the 10-year. We're up to 113.14 right now on the 10-year. And as we wrap up the program, we jump over in that 10-year. You're talking about a yield now of 3.72%. 3.72% yields coming down. Be interesting. Uh, ECB playing into that, of course, as they are now seeming hawkish going forward in the Fed. Not as hawkish as maybe the market was fearing. Folks, thanks so much for starting your day off with me. I'm coming back with a 10 o'clock update, and then we'll have Basil's program just from this morning an hour ago. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. Building 